guys, bros. Welcome to an episode of Cougar House Garage. Today, Brandon and I are going to continue working on the inner fender we made for the passenger side of the foreigner yesterday. And then the driver's side, we got to go ahead and cut out a piece out, out of cardboard and then trace, put that onto some 20 gauge sheet metal, cut that out with the plasma cutter, shape that, put that in, panel bond it, and then as well move on to our battery box and finish mounting up that bottom base plate part. And we're, we're going to go ahead and panel bond that in because we don't want to burn the outer paint on the outer sheet metal of the rear quarter pan, pan, pan panel because the uh, base plate kind of sits back, kind of sits against it, and there's some spots where it kind of goes up and just sits onto a thing. And so we're going to panel bond it there and, th and then along the bottom. I mean, it'll be perfectly strong to hold our battery up. It doesn't support the battery. It's just going, going to prevent the little uh, base plate from moving at all. And then we got to go ahead and drill some holes in that base plate and get some captive nuts welded on the back side of it. And then we can bolt our battery box in once that's panel bonded down in the back of the foreigner. So let's uh, get right into this. Without further ado, let's get started. There's a little plate deal. Chills on top of there. Scott also wants some little brackets to reinforce it in there, so I'm going to make some cardboard things that sit like that. Actually, all the way in there. And then I'll make them out of metal. Probably just do two. One should be plenty, but two will be more than enough. Um, I really shouldn't need any, but whatever. Yeah. Still got to cut out that line. Scoot it all back a little bit so it doesn't interfere with that. Um... Yeah, after I get it all in there, I'll figure out where here I need to bore out some more to access that bolt point. Then on the battery box, I make two little tabs on the front that end up sitting down here so I can bolt it to that. And then I'm going to make a little tab on the back that'll bolt to right there. And then we'll have a bolt on battery box for the permanent mounted plate. So yeah, uh, I'm going to do that. You can see what I got going on. Cut that bit out. Because, uh, well, I kind of had to. Um, come on, let go. Uh, there you go. That bit sits on there nice. I got to trim this little curve right here so it can sit all the way back. Then where that line is, I'm going to shave that off, that way it's not right on the edge there. That way it has just enough for this piece to sit in front of it without actually hitting it. And I've got that one piece mocked up. So i got to transfer that to metal, weld it on the main base plate, and then... Well, I gotta make one more before I transfer it to metal and weld it and all that stuff. But yeah, that one's good. One more. First try. It does actually fit. Front con through the back contacts. What about the front? Yeah, if you give the front a good whack, it'll contact. Gap on the back looks good. The gap on the front's a bit higher than I want. A bit bigger. So, what I'm gonna do, that vertical piece that's right about there, I'm gonna shave about an eighth inch off the front of it so I can scoot it that way a little bit and that'll seal up that gap a little better because right now it's, it's wedged in against that panel. It's real tight, um, which is actually kind of good. But, I do want that tighter for the seam sealer or panel bonding adhesive to bond a little better. Uh, yeah, cool. Did not expect it to go that well on the first try, to be completely honest. To be completely honest. I did actually measure from a common point to get these in about the right spot on the first go, so that helped a lot. Um, yeah. I'm going to slice that off a little bit, scooch it forward, tack it back on there, and it should be money, money.
Much better. That's what I want. Ta-da! Was that so hard? Yes. Yes, it was. Well, I'm gonna lie, it wasn't hard. It just took fucking forever. All right, so now I get to weld those. I get to weld the things underneath. I get to make some tabs for this to bolt this onto there. So let's do all that. Focus, damn you. Check this out. You can see the weld through the penetration. A little tiny, little dimes. Look at that. I've never seen it that perfectly on any of my welds before. That's really cool looking. I can actually feel it. I can feel each one of those. Weird, kind of cool. these for a little bit. Our old lift pads are torn up. Get those thrown, thrown on now. Now that Brandon's got that lower battery base plate all made, finalized, and he's got the feet welded on to the battery box that will in turn mount onto that, we're going to weld some captive nuts on the back side of it so it'll be really easy to just unbolt it, bolt it on whenever we got to remove the battery box. So now that we're uh, done with that, he's ready to go ahead and pull out our 3M panel bond and we're going to panel bond that bottom base plate in there. Okay, so now that we got that ready to panel bond in, we went and looked in our cupboard for some of our button top Allen head stainless steel hardware that we like to use, and we're low on it. So we're gonna screw it together, or bolt it down, or bolt the box to the base plate with the uh, couple screws we have and a couple of uh, nylock nuts, and then we'll um, panel bond that tomorrow so we, we can run up to Tacoma Screw and grab some regular non-stainless steel nuts to weld on the back side of the battery base plate so that way we have those captive nuts and uh in, in the meantime we'll set it in there where it goes and stuff drill the holes and whatnot and then move on to our other inner fender So 
that's where it will go. Move the light real quick. So there you go, guys. So we'll sit down there like that. Panel bonded in, but we need some nuts to put on the backs of all these captive nuts to weld on first. But so now that that's where we want it and ready, we're going to move on to panel bonding our inner fender in on this side, and then we'll continue on to the other side. All right, so like I was saying, now that we got that in there, Brandon's gonna go ahead and panel bond this inner fender in. And like I said in the last video, we're just gonna kind of put a little dabble in like four to six spots on that to hold it in just to prevent the werewolf sleeping noise in the back of the Forerunner. Because we gotta, you know, do the four wheel underground towers and rad flow coilovers in the back of the future here because I can't leave anything alone. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to cardboard Catting the passenger side inner fender, or sorry, the driver side one where the fuel fill, filler neck is, and then we'll transfer that on the sheet metal and you know, just like this side. Brandon's prepping his inner fender here with a little bit of sandpaper where he's gonna lay his panel on. See, it's just perfect. So he's gonna get that all made, cleaned, sanded how he wants it, and then he'll put one of the little tips on the 3M panel bond here and we'll get this inner fender in. dry. I tacked it where I could and uh, yeah I can't say I'm pleased honestly. Can't say I'm pleased at all. But the good thing is it doesn't show from out here. So that's really the important thing. Uh oh. For side B. Which I forgot even needed to be done. Look at that. Super narrow all the way down. Shoop. It's gonna be super annoying. Don't need the mystery. I hope you see what I can see. Cause I don't need the mystery. Hope you see what I can see. So Brandon went, went ahead and he uh, traced out his cardboard piece after he put it in the wheel well there. He traced it out on the 20 gauge sheet metal. And now he's going to go ahead and whip out our Miller Spectrum 620, 650? No, 725. 625. <laughs> it's right, right there. I can't even remember numbers. But anyways, we're, we're going to get that cut out.
that Brandon's got that all made, he's down here test fitting it, seeing if it's the exact shape he wants it to be, and then we're getting pretty close to actually tacking it in in a couple spots and panel bonding it. There you go, bros. Another day at Cougar House Garage. Today was pretty productive. I mean, Brandon and I got the inner fender for the passenger side we made yesterday. We got that uh, put in there, panel bonded in where we wanted it in a couple spots, tacked down, and then we moved on to working on our inner fender piece for the driver's side. He, Brandon got some cardboard and traced it out, transferred that on, on some 20 gauge sheet metal, and then shaped it and made it and stuck it in there and he's kind of got it to where he wants it so tomorrow he'll go ahead and he'll come in the garage and he'll get that panel bonded and tacked in a couple spots he wants it and then we're going to move on to running up to Tacoma Screw because we're working on, on the battery base plate today and we realize we're out of hardware so we need to go get some little regular nuts because we've got some stainless steel nuts to work with our little button allen top screws that, that we're using to uh, mount the battery box to the base plate and we're, we just need some regular mild steel nuts to weld on the back side of the base plate so we have captive nuts, you know, so you don't gotta use a wrench on the back and fuck that. Captive nuts is the way it goes, especially when you're fabricating something. Try to do that whenever you can. So we're gonna run up to Tacoma Screw in the morning and grab some of those, tack those on the back side of the battery base plate, get that panel bonded in, and then as well as the spots that hold the clamshell together of the battery box, we gotta put some captive nuts on the back side of there, and then we'll get that all mounted down, and we'll be done mounting the battery and making the battery box, and we'll have the inner fenders in. And we'll be ready to move on to the front. We got our dome tubing for our steering, and I got our heim joints from foil underground for the steering itself, and one of the clamps from ballistic fabrication that will hold the uh, hydraulic ram onto the steering rod itself. It's a little clamp with, with these allens. So we'll, we'll do that probably uh, next Wednesday. But anyways, thanks for watching today, guys. Thanks for being here, as always. Thanks for your constant support. And please, if you guys would like to like and subscribe, smash that like button. And then if you guys want to see more of Cougar House Garage, check us out at cougarhousegarage.com and then at Facebook forward slash Cougar House Garage, and we are Cougar House Garage on Instagram. Follow us, and we'll see you guys in the next video.